136 with that pizza and pasta. So at least rehydrated on our unofficial scales to 139 pounds. And here comes Jorge Solis from Guadalajara, Mexico with 40 wins and 29 knockouts. Says he worked a lot on the Gamboa style when we spoke with him yesterday. Distance is gonna be a key for him. Yeah, listen, he was boxing right there with Pacquiao, very competitively for seven rounds. He knows how to handle himself. However, like many fighters nowadays, he struggles to make 126 pounds, so he 130, though he claims it was just for opportunity. It also has something to do with the fact that, you know, he was gorging on pizza and pasta as soon as he weighed in. <laughs> Interesting for a guy that owns a taco stand in his hometown of Guadalajara. Solis is in the ring. Max, let's take a look at the featherweight Lance guy. A very, very talented division. Really is. The belt holders in this division are actually pretty good and actually deserve to be at the top of the division. Chris John, longtime titleist. Gamboa and Lopez are the stars. Hasegawa just won a belt at 26, moved up in weight to do it. And the notables, Gonzalez has a fight with Hasegawa coming up. You saw Mikey Garcia dominate tonight. Caballero lost to Litzau, but Litzau moves up. Caballero's still dangerous at 26. And De Leon, I think, deserves to be mentioned because in losing a decision to Broner at 30, I think he fought as well as he ever has. That's a look at a very talented 126 pounds, and there is the cyclone of Guantanamo. Yuriorkis Gamboa. 2004 Olympic gold medalist representing Cuba at 112 pounds. Roy's been working really hard on his English. He says, I'm getting it little by little. One thing he's got a lot of, though, is natural given ability in the ring. He has a lot of natural talent, a lot of speed, very flashy guy, suspect with his balance with his shield because I think a couple of his knockdowns that I've seen, he basically was off balance. So I don't think his shield is quite as suspect as they think it is, but we will find out tonight. He was down in his last fight on September the 11th against Orlando Salido. Right hand dropped Gamboa in the eighth round of that fight. Defected out of Cuba in December of 2006 while training for the Pan Am Games in Venezuela. Fought the first couple fights of his career in Germany. Now fighting out of Miami, Florida. Yorgos Gamboa. Time for the formal introductions of our main event as we send it up to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, courtesy of Caesars Atlantic City, welcome to the famous boardwalk hall of Atlantic City, New Jersey, where tonight Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated in association with Arena Box Promotions proudly present the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Featherweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Tecate, Cerveza con Caracter, and sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. Boxing Commissioner Aaron Davis, Chairman Tony Orlando, WBA President Gilberto Mendoza. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout will be Lynn Carter, Ron McNair, and Joseph Pasquale. And inside the ring, in charge of the action, at the bell, referee David Fields. And now, for the sold-out thousands in attendance here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, and the millions watching around the world on HBO's Boxing After Dark. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing silver with pink, official weight 125, one half pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one. 40 victories, including 29 knockouts, only two defeats with two draws. From Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, the challenger and current interim WBA super featherweight world champion, Jorge. El Coloradito Solis. Fighting out of the red corner, 
Wearing multicolors, officially weighing 126 pounds, this Olympic gold medal champion now as a professional has a perfect record consisting of 19 fights, 19 victories, including 15 knockouts. Thomas y Caballeros de Guantanamo, Cuba, the reigning, defending, undefeated featherweight champion of the world, El Ciclón de Guantanamo, Piriorquiz. Simon, man. Always trying to play the game. Okay, gentlemen, we scheduled to box 12 rounds for the WBA IBF Featherweight Championship of the World. I've gone over the rules in the dressing room. I expect you to obey my commands at all times. Most of all, protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Because of the unique political circumstances in Cuba, there's no built-in Cuban market in North America the way there is for Puerto Rican fighters and especially Mexican fighters. And as a result, Gamboa is going to have to rise on his own merits. His merits both as a fighter and as an attraction. He's not yet a ticket seller. Round number one scheduled for 12. Gamboa and Solis. Solis trying to work out the jab. Gamboa, a tremendous athlete. Roy, how do you see this playing out? Well, for Gamboa, it's, it's funny because he's a short guy who fights outside mainly. So for him, I think he wants to stay on the outside, be smart, use his speed and his power, and late in the fight, try to use those combinations to land headshots, big headshots. For Solis, I think he needs to make it an ugly fight, try to get closer to Gamboa so he can get to his body and possibly try to wear Gamboa's body down so that maybe his headshots will become more effective on Gamboa late in the fight. So Lee told us during the fighter meetings, 80% of my punches need to be to the body. I've got to pressure him and see if he can handle the power. We'll find out if he can accomplish that against the slick Gamboa. He taps Solis to the body. And then Solis flicks out his jab. Gamboa was coming up the professional ranks at first. He looked like a little Jack Dempsey or something, you know. That's why his nickname is the Cyclone. And boy, he's developed increasingly as an outside fighter as he stepped up the level of competition. I don't think that's going to be the way that he becomes a draw if in fact he ever becomes a draw. No, I don't think it, it is either because what is built, he's built like a Mike Tyson in, in this weight division. He's short, he's compact, he's very strong built, but he's fighting outside. And it, that doesn't turn a lot of fans on as far as boxing fans go. And especially being that you're a foreigner fighting in this country, you must be excited in order to get the American public's attention. And he has the ability to do it. He has overwhelming speed and punching power. And you see it right there as he lurches in with that left hook. Twice he taps Solis with it. It's a strange thing, but it's also an, a, an a credit to the boxing program in Cuba because everybody in Cuba learns to box, to box from outside, and that's just the way it is. So him being a shorter guy, he's still a very, very high-class outside boxer. A program set forth by famed Cuban head coach, Alicidi Segata for many years developing great Olympic champions for the amateur boxing style. Including the great heavyweight Felix Savon and many more. And just backed away from that right hand from Solis. And that was a very smart uppercut by Solis. End of round number one, scheduled for 12. Breathe. Oh my. Breathe, breathe. Oh my. Oh my. Breathe. Eh, la amenaza. 
Tú sabes, tú sabes lo que hace falta, eh. You know the threat. You know that you're doing everything well. The only thing you have to do is find your rhythm. Remember that you can't stand still like he does. He's static. He doesn't move. You understand? Ya después que tú cojas tu ritmo, todo te se sale bien. Pegues y mueve, te sientes mueve. Hit and move. Hit and move. You let him go two times, but you gotta come back. Cuando lo dejes corto, regresa rápido. When you've got him in short, come back on it. ¿Cómo te sientes ya? How you feeling? Good. Bring your hands up. You gotta bring your hands up. He caught you twice. Bring your hands up. Lively, lively. One of the things Gamboa told us during the fighting meetings yesterday is, you know, I want to see how he deals with my speed and my movement early, and then we'll kind of figure out where we want to go from there. Boy, that's pretty common, isn't it, for elite guys? Talented guys as Gamboa steps in with a couple of left hands. Yeah, it's pretty uh, common because when you got the hand speed, you want to figure out can a guy take your hand speed. Oh, right here! Touchdown, Solis! Three, four, five, six, seven, eight! Come in! Well, now they've both been down five times in their careers. <laughs> and there's the speed and the power of Gamboa who chops a right hand to Solis. Carl Gamboa hurt Solis a little with a right hand to the body at the end of the first round. Left hand hurts Solis. Gamboa in on the attack, hooks to the body. This is the Gamboa that got everyone so excited on his way up. A lot of it missing though. This is the Gamboa we want to see. Come on, let's go. The guy who gambles and goes for the knockout. And we knew he would because this is the measure stick to Pacquiao for him. Right. So we knew he would probably come out and be a little bit more aggressive than he's been in the last two or three fights. And I think he got a little bit scared off that style because he was so reckless that he was getting dropped. Not hurt, just dropped because he was off balance. Body combination oh, 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 oh. right on the board. Yo, yo. Look at me, Bobby. Pick it up, pick David it up. Fields, right. the referee okay. saying, keep Let's it up, go. Gamboa. But, but this Gamboa is the guy who's so blindingly fast. So at least Three, down again, it's being four, ruled a knockdown. Five, six, seven, eight. Let's go. He's so blindingly fast, he seems to be able to do whatever he wants, even against another world-class fighter. Gamboa jumping in with power shots with a minute to go here in round two. And there you saw he avoided the right-hand counter by stepping out. I can't remember. Which he doesn't always do. Right. I can't remember a time I've seen a guy with 19 fights that all the guys, the top guys in his weight division, kind of do not want to face. The number one contenders and the number two contenders say they're not ready for him yet. You very rarely see this in boxing. Right. Mikey Garcia is now the mandatory for the winner of this fight. Oh, that's right on, right on the belt line. We saw in our first fight, Mikey Garcia, and he's, you know, they, they acknowledge the Garcia team, not Gamboa, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so at least throws the right hand of the body, sweeping left hand from Gamboa. A good shot. A hurt your hand kind of shot, off high off the head. Final seconds here in the second. So at least down twice in a round. Come, go ahead. Breathe. Vamos, Jorge. Let's go, Jorge. Let's go, you bastard. Let's go. Calm down. Which one? What do you have? Nothing. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. We'll stop him with the jab. Stop him with the jab. Here you see come with the overhand right, right over the top of the left hand, followed by a beautiful left hook that sent Solis to the canvas. Same like that, you see that left hook come right off the straight right hand. He tried to, he kind of slipped the right hand, but he couldn't catch the hook. That was knockdown number one. And here number two, you see him come with an overhand right to the back of the head. And I think that was more of a pull down. I don't know if that was for sure a knockdown, but I guess because the glove made contact to the back of the head, it was ruled a knockdown. It's Solis did get punched in the back of the head and then got pushed down. Gamboa, according to CompuBox, landed 32 of 66 power shots in the round, 48%. Solis only threw 25 punches in total in the round. 
Now Gamboa Gamboa attacks the body. A real test for Gamboa, so Lisa's wait, the, wait, just wait, the wait, kind wait. of fighter who could fight his way back into a fight like this. Let's see if Gamboa can maintain that pace and pressure. I tell you what, Solis definitely is not afraid. And he definitely thinks he can win this fight. Watch your head, watch your head. You know, kinda, no. kinda, they were exchanging right hands and and Solis put his head on the opposite shoulder and Gamboa took what was there. But remember in the Salido fight, he lost two points for hitting in the back of the head. I think these body shots are really bothering Solis. Gamboa has this very interesting left hook to the head, right to the body combination he throws. Well, what can Solis do? There's sometimes where Gamboa will drop that right hand and leave himself exposed. What can Solis do to maybe feint and bait him into that where he can land a big shot? Well, it's kind of hard. He got to feint him a few times and not really go at him and make him sit still off the feints. Once he makes Solis sit still off the feints, then he got him sitting froze, is what we call it. Once he freezes him, then he can rush the right hand down the pipe and possibly land it. But he's taking a gamble with that because Gamboa's hands are so fast like that. He usually can knock Solis off balance before Solis can land that straight right hand. But he's just going to have to do like Max said earlier and gamble. Gamboa yeah, well, jumps in with a left and a right. You know every time we do a really athletic fighter, I make comparisons to you, Roy, but that check hook he just hit Garcia with reminded me of like a Roy Jones <laughs> left hook that he got away with just because of superior athleticism. And that's, what, that's how he gets away with, with a lot of things here because he has such superior athleticism and he has that over most go, of the go, guys in this weight division. Along with power and speed. Does sound kind of familiar when I think about it. Must have been a lot of fun to not have to do things by the book and still <laughs> dominate. <laughs> and Gamboa is that kind of fighter. Right hand after the left hook. Gamboa just picking apart Jorge Solis. Oh. And down goes Solis. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Cannot be saved by the bell. You got to make the count. And that is the end of round number three. The bench. We just saw him. Come sit. Both fighters standing in between the round. Hey, how you doing? Fine, fine, fine. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Are you good? Yeah. You want to fight? Are you fine? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Father. Vamos, Father. Vamos. Oh, Jorge. It's nothing there. Here you see Gamboa moving left and right, he comes with overhand right, followed by a short jab hook. Wasn't really even a hook or a jab, it was kind of a, a, a mix up between a jab and a hook right there. Good punch, good straight punch, almost equivalent to a straight left hand. Beautiful shot by Gamboa. I don't care how weight drained Solis is to make 26, you can't teach what Gamboa just did. That's, no, a third, that's the third time he's been down so far in the fight. Let's check in with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold hey, Letterman. Hey, okay, hey, I got hey, two hey, rounds hey, to one. 29-25, Yuri Orkis Gamboa. Now, the first round, Gamboa did very little except look at the guy. So he's probably won it with his jab. Round two, he's got he's to get a 10-7 round for two knockdowns. Round three, a 10-8 round for the knockdown. And personally, I don't think Jorge Solis knows where he is. When he wandered off at the end of that third round, I thought he was out of it. Anyway, two runs to one, New York is Gamboa. And the hand speed is just too much. So Solis ducks away from danger that time. It's hand speed, it's punching power, and it's defensive responsibility. This is the kind of blend that we've been looking for 
the exciting Gamboa mixed with the more seasoned Gamboa who's not Oh, right old. hand! Touchdown Solis! Beautiful hook right here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Solis okay, says hold on to his corner. Yeah. Right, Fourth yo, time he's go. been down. Solis giving Gamboa his props <laughs> and his reaction just being like, damn, I, I can't believe what just happened. Where, the, where are these shots coming from? Is the referee hitting me or what? <laughs> so Lee's off balance. Gamboa trying to measure him up and comes in with power shots again. Left hand hurts Solis. Right hand combination. David Fields taking a look. Down goes Solis. David Fields stops it here in the fourth. Beautiful stoppage. That's the Gamboa we were all waiting to see finally come out. This is a coming out party for him, I think. The cyclone of Guantanamo comes blowing into Atlantic City and dismantles Jorge Solis. Five knockdowns in four rounds. Roy, we're going to take a look at the first knockdown in round number four. Uh, Solis is being attended to, and it's yeah, just the first long knockdown. Right. He was walking. He came with a hook, the hook, straight hook, uh, straight right hand off the hook. A beautiful combination. Nothing Solis could do about it. He never saw the right hand coming. The hook blinded him, and the right hand snuck behind him right there. The hook blinded him. He tried to put his hand up, but he missed the shot trying to turn his head. No way he could have countered. He could have come from that shot. Then at the end of the fight, he did like we so wanted to see him do. He attacked like a shark smelling blood in the water. Caught him with a beautiful left hook. That didn't drop him. He came back with a right and just a barrage of punches. And the corner is mad about those punches behind the head yeah. right there. And, and, and Gabo has been penalized at different times in his career. That's the one thing. He's got to have a little bit more composure in those situations and not throw those punches. Official time of the stoppage. Here is Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, Courtesy of Caesars Atlantic City, the official time is 1 minute 31 seconds of round number four. The end comes, and still he is undefeated, the featherweight champion of the world, El Ciclón de Guantanamo, Yuri Ortiz Gamboa. Dominant performance by Yoriorkis Gamboa, dropping Jorge Solis five times in the four rounds of boxing action. Let's take a look at the total punches. Gamboa landing 78 of 194, 40%. He was faster, he was stronger, and the power numbers will illustrate that. Well, I guess when you score five knockdowns in four rounds, you're going to get that. 151 thrown, 45% is what he landed on Solis. Now we'll take a look at the punch zone as to where all those connects went. And you take a look on your right, the punches landed on Solis. And you see that Gamboa used hooks to the body very effectively, 29 shots to the body, and then worked to the head both sides. And Solis never had an answer. Gamboa, as you can see on the left, virtually untouched. He's now 20-0 with 16 stoppages. Yoriorkis Gamboa in the ring with Max Kellerman. Wow. Assess your performance. Dino tu rendimiento, ¿cómo fue? Bueno, para mí fue un, una pelea muy excelente. De acuerdo a lo que pasó el año pasado. It was a very good fight and a very uh, compared to what happened last year. What happened last year? On your way up the ranks, you were very exciting, little reckless. And then it seemed you corrected the recklessness, but the excitement went away. El año pasado hicimos buen trabajo. Pero nos golpeó la distancia en el local que vamos a pelear. Como por ejemplo en Alemania una semana antes y en La Vega una semana antes no es suficiente. What happened is last last year we did a very good fights, but obviously we took fights on short notice in Germany and in Las Vegas and that's what happened. It, it, is it an issue where you're now starting to put it all together? We see the hand speed, we see the excitement, the pressure at times, but also more defensive responsibility, the whole package. Realmente ese paquete está completo en Yuroki Gamboa. 
simplemente que con respecto a la estancia en Alemania y en Las Vegas con altura, no tuvimos el tiempo de reglamentado, por eso perdimos velocidad en ocasión. That package is complete, and what you see with the Yorkies Gamboa, but the problems that we saw in, in Germany and Las Vegas because of the height, that was a problem. Against Matagua, Juan Mod struggled, you blew him out. Solis went seven, eight rounds with Pacquiao, fought well, you blew him out. Can you talk about that? Esto fue la cosa que tuvimos en la entrevista con SBO, que yo le dije que no es lo mismo Manny Pacquiao y Solis en el tiempo aquel comparado con Yorkie Gamboa, algo muy diferente. That's what I told you in the fighter meetings. It's not the same with those characters, those figures, Manny Pacquiao, Juan Manuel, Mar Juan Manuel Lopez, as, um, uh, as uh, now I am. I am completely different. Finally, everyone's waiting for you to see, to see you fight Juan Ma. Do you think that you will eventually get that fight? Or are you too dangerous because Top Rank is doing very well with him as a ticket seller? vende mucho boleto. Yo creo que definitivamente Top Rank va a ir alejando esa pelea porque sabe que no tiene cómo ganarme. Top Rank is going to put that fight very far away and keep it in a distance because they know that he doesn't have what's necessary to beat me. So if not Juan Ma, who? Chris Young, quien esté, que esté como campeón en mi división o de lo contrario va a tener que subir a 130 para retar lo que dan como campeonato. Chris John, whoever's in my division, or I'll have to move up to 130 and then uh, fight those and those in that division. Thank you for an electrifying performance. Quiero aprovechar para quiero aprovechar para darle las bendiciones a los hermanos del pueblo de Japón producto a lo que pasó con el tsunami. I want to say God bless all the all the brothers in Japan for all the disaster that happened there, and I'm, we're with them. We see Juan Manuel Lopez right here. You want to fight this guy? Claro que sí. Es cuestión de yo salir de mi pelea con salido. Y hacer las negociaciones correctas, y claro, no hay problema. Nunca, ni él se ha negado, ni yo me he negado. Yes, absolutely. The only thing we have to do is finish with Salido, but we could do that one. He's never said no, Gamboa's never said no, and I've never said no, so we can do it. We just have to negotiate it. So, so todo este es un negocio, tenemos unos promotores que deben de tomar la decisión, pero yo nunca he dicho que no, ni el que no. Somos dos grandes peleadores, los mejores de la división, y en un momento dado nos podemos enfrentar, claro que sí. It's a business, we got promoters, that we've never said no, he's never said no, I've never said no. But we're the best of the division, we have to do it. Last word. Última palabra. Bueno, yo creo que Juan Manuel López está confirmando aquí en el público que después de salido, o después de Solí, de salido, va a ser la pelea con Yorok Gamboa. Esperamos eso, caballero. Juan Manuel López has confirmed it here. After salido, we'll get this one done here. I want to bring... Thank you very much. I want to bring in Solís. What's it like to fight Gamboa? Pues es terrible, lo felicito, es un gran peleador. Este tiene el defecto de golpear en nunca, pero está bien, lo de felicito, es un gran peleador. It's, it's terrible, he's, he's a great fighter, he hits hard, and he's got a defect, he hits behind the nape, but he's a great fighter. You were also in with Pacquiao, how would you compare the two? Híjole, este, pues Pacquiao no, no pega fuerte, pero es una máquina de tirar golpes. Gamboa tiene una pegada brutal, es rápido, creo que. Eh, me reservo el pronóstico, sinceramente. Damn, uh, Pacquiao uh, doesn't hit that hard. He throws a lot of punches, but he doesn't hit that hard. Gamboa hits very hard, and you know I've, I've got to got to keep my cards on that. I won't play my cards. Bob. All right, thank you very much, Max. Now, um, so Lee fought Pacquiao in April of 2007, but Gamboa makes a huge statement tonight. Roy, I mean, just dominant with the passion that he fights, with the speed, the power, but he brings passion that excites fans. Yeah, he's a very exciting guy, a lot of power, a lot of speed, and it was very impressive tonight to hear Solis say that Gamboa punches harder than Pacquiao. That's saying an awful lot for this guy. He's only 20 fights in, and he's already punching harder than Pacquiao. As a featherweight, that can be pretty tough for the division. Roy, I mean, five knockdowns in four rounds. Let's take a look at how Yorkis Gamboa just dominated Jorge Solis in this fight. I mean, he goes, 
goes on the attack. We're going to show you four of them. This is in round number two. Left, right. Yeah, hit a hook, a hook the first time, a right behind the head the second time, a, look, a cross jab actually the third time, which I thought was the worst knockdown, a straight right hand, a beautiful straight right hand the fourth time, and here just a barrage of punches. But he showed a lot of uh, weapons in his arsenal tonight, and that says a lot. That means he has power in both hands, he's capable of hitting you with anything and taking you out with anything, and that's what we look for in a top pound-for-pound -pound rated fighter. You know, it's interesting because uh, during the Mikey Garcia fight, he's a technician, same weight class, and obviously less experience. You guys wanted to see more. Gamboa gave you kind of what you wanted to see. Well, he showed us why those guys decided that they're not ready for him yet. Max Kellerman, uh, your thoughts on what you saw from the Cyclone of Guantanamo? Yeah, those guys aren't ready for him, as Roy said, but we've been ready for him. And he had such promise, both as, a, as one of the most decorated amateurs who ever lived, and as a young professional who fought with urgency and created incredible buzz. He hasn't been a ticket seller thus far in his career. But if he can string a couple performances like this together, and of course, to a degree, it's matchmaking. Top Rank has the best matchmakers in the business, all working for Top Rank, and they know what they're doing. But the matchmakers can't throw the punches, certainly not like that. He can string a few of these together, and he'll be a ticket seller. Max, great stuff tonight. A lot of fun watching the featherweights take center stage. You too, Roy, and also thanks to Nick Charles for joining us in our first fight of the evening here on HBO's Boxing After Dark. Now, earlier tonight, there were two very intriguing cards on the undercard. Baltimore Ravens safety Tom Zibikowski taking on Caleb Grimet. Grimet, only one pro fight, but he had cage fighting experience, and early on, Zibikowski had things under control. Landing good uppercut, switching from southpaw to orthodox, but he wore down as the fight went on, and Grimet gave him all he could handle. Zibikowski would win a unanimous decision victory in their four-round fight. Then, Jorge Diaz squaring off against Tian Kennedy at 122 pounds. Diaz 15-0 with nine knockouts. He would go down twice in this fight. Round number three, the first time he was down at the hands of Tian Kennedy. Also, down in round number six, Tian Kennedy gets his 17th win and remains undefeated. If you missed any of tonight's telecast, you can catch it in its entirety at the dates and times listed below. For more boxing updates, there are now lots of places to go. HBO's Facebook page, HBO's Twitter feed, and as always, HBO.com. Go to our website now to sign up for the official HBO Boxing Newsletter. Also go to HBO.com starting Monday for new installments of Ring Life, focusing on Andre Berto and Amir Khan, both making title defenses on World Championship Boxing, April 16th. Coming up next on...